I've had a few cameras in the Sony A6000 series, but if I would recommend just one, the Sony A6400 is definitely the best buy. Watch this video till the end and you will understand why. I have now had my Sony A6400 over a year, it's rather like 18 months or so, so I have got to know it very well by now. I'm actually recording on it right now, but don't worry, I will edit in a lot of B-roll so you will get a really good look at it. Overall, it's simply an amazing camera, but there are a few things that I wish it had. As you can see, I have done some small mods to it. I have fixed the classic or notorious Sony Rattling strap connectors with rubber from my earbuds. Check out my instructional video on how to do that. I have also mounted a cold show mount on the side because I'm not happy about where the built-in hot show is located. But let's talk more about that later and get into some basic facts. The Sony A6400 has a compact size. The build quality is great, the body is made of metal. It looks a bit like the A6300 and the A6500. It has a 24 megapixel sensor hybrid autofocus system with the 425 face detection points and 425 contrast detection points. It has a 3 inch flip up LCD screen with 921,600 pixels. It has a 2.36 million dots viewfinder. It can take 11 photos per second and it has an expandable ISO of 102,400. So, who is the uh, Sony A6400 for? I would say it's for advanced consumers that are hybrid shooters in a sense that they shoot both uh, video and photos. It's also perfect for vloggers because it has the flip up screen and the input audio jack for external microphones. Given that this is a camera for advanced consumers, it's still capable of taking really professional looking footage. But professionals would choose other cameras more dedicated for their purpose. Let's just talk briefly about the history when the Sony A6400 was released. The Sony A6400 is the successor of the Sony A6300. But when it was released it was a bit uh, confusing for the market or for the Sony community because it was in many ways better even than the Sony A6500. It had a better processor and it had features like uh, no time limit for recording video and it had uh, eye tracking autofocus for photography and it also had a flip up screen. Since then Sony has uh, released the Sony A6600 which is the successor of the Sony A6500. So let's talk about the contemporary lineup. The Sony A6600 is of course the best APS-C camera in Sony's lineup, but I would argue that the Sony A6400 is by far the best value for money in the lineup. In comparison, the Sony A6600 has a bigger battery, it has IBIS, which is in body image stabilization, even though it's not the best uh, image stabilization I have seen, but it still has image stabilization and it has a um, headphone jack or audio out jack so you can uh, monitor your sound when you are recording. But there is a $500 price difference between the Sony A6600 and the Sony A6400 and for those money you can buy extra batteries, a dedicated battery charger, you can buy a gimbal which is not only on par with the image stabilization it's even better and you can keep your gimbal for any camera that you might buy in the future. So in my opinion the Sony A6400 with those accessories is more value for money than the Sony A6600. Today almost every camera has high resolution and great picture profile and uh, people don't really struggle with those things. The problem is the hit rate, how many photos you actually nail. 
You know when you are out and taking a lot of photos and they all look totally okay in your camera, on the screen on your camera, but when you come home and look at them on your computer, you realize that uh, many of them are out of focus. I just hate when that happens. So what's really useful for people is a super fast and super accurate autofocus, which the Sony a6400 happens to have, especially when it's paired with the native lenses. The eye tracking autofocus is only for photography. I actually got a bit disappointed because my Sony RX100 Mark 7 has eye tracking autofocus both for video and photography, but the Sony a6400 only has the eye tracking autofocus for photography and then it has facial tracking for video. In real life usage I have never had any practical problems with this. The facial uh, tracking is very accurate and I never really get my videos out of focus because of that. The Sony A6400 has no recording limit on 30 minutes, which some of the older Sony cameras had. There are no overheating problems at all. I have been shooting 4K for a uh, very long sessions and I never had any problems with overheating. The 4K video is amazingly sharp and even if I don't shoot 4K a lot because of the heavier files and demanding uh, editing, I am really impressed with the 4K footage from this camera. It has a built-in intervalometer so you can shoot time lapses, which I do quite often for B-rolls and other cool videos. It has a very compact size, which is super convenient. You can bring it with you all the time. It's great for logging. And the compact size is actually one of the reasons that I'm not shooting full frame. I went from the Canon full frame system to the Sony APS-C because I wanted to have smaller camera bodies. The Sony A6400 has many picture profiles and you can shoot video in S-Log2 for example. And that is great if you want to work with the color grading or LUTs and have more to work with in your post processing. And if you don't like to work a lot in post-processing and editing, there are also features that will give you great footage right out of the camera, like the SNQ function, which will let you take uh, slow motion footage or time lapse footage and create videos in the camera, so you simply can uh, export them to your computer. There are a lot of lenses available for your Sony a6400 and there are many lenses available with the optical image stabilization so I don't really feel a need for IBIS. In my own lineup of lenses I have both the Sony lenses and Sigma lenses. I have the Sony 18-50 kit lens which is a fantastic lens and uh, it's small, it's quiet, and it has optical image stabilization. I also have the Sigma Trio, which is a fantastic set of prime lenses with aperture 1.4, and they are 16mm, 30mm, and 56mm. I'm actually using the Sigma 30mm 1.4 right now when I'm recording this video, and I'm very happy with all those uh, Sigma lenses. I also have the Sony 18 to 105 mm Aperture 4 lens, which is a great lens for both photo and video because it has a very quiet uh, motorized uh, zoom for smooth uh, zooming in video. And it also has optical image stabilization and I use it a lot when I'm just bringing one lens with me. I just want to mention that since I bought my Sony 18 to 105, Tamron has released a 17 to 70 at the aperture 2.8, which is a faster zoom lens. So if you need that extra wide aperture, you should actually take a look at that lens too. But otherwise I can recommend all those lenses I own for my Sony a6400. I also use macro extension tubes a lot for 
B-rolls or product shots if I want to get really close up to subjects. So you can really find a lens for every purpose for your Sony A6400. One thing I don't like is that the hot show mount is placed right where you flip up your screen. So if you are using a shotgun microphone in your hot show, you will cover the screen so you can't really see yourself when you are vlogging or talking like this. There are cheap culture bounds that easily solve this, but it should have been done right from the beginning. Another thing that I don't really like is the menu system and the buttons. The buttons are very small and they are also somewhat shallow or difficult to push, like the uh, record button for video is uh, small and shallow and I use that button a lot. The menu system is a bit complex and it's um, difficult and not always logical how to navigate through it. But after 18 months I'm beginning to get used to it. But I still struggle with it sometimes and it uh, wouldn't really have to be that way. And many other cameras like uh, Canon and Fujifilm are a lot easier to use. They have better usability or user experience in my opinion. Another small thing which is actually a bit annoying and is uh, a part of the user interaction is that the camera doesn't really remember the exposure settings when you are switching from photography to video. So if you have a shutter speed of 50 and aperture 1.4 when you are shooting video and then you want to take a photo on the same location with the same lighting and all that you will get your last photo setting or something else it, it won't be the same as you had for video and that's a bit uh, annoying for me the Sony A6400 has some rolling shutter problems it's not always prominent or noticeable but when you are shooting 4K, you will see it. So depending on what you are shooting, you might consider this. If you are shooting a talking head video like this, or if you have scripted your video or you have a storyboard, you can easily film it in a way so you won't get the rolling shutter. And like I said before, the Sony A6400 has no IBIS. For me, it hasn't been any problems. I own a few lenses with the optical image stabilization and I also own a gimbal, but it would of course be handy if it had IBIS and it would be great for handheld footage. The Sony A6400 is very power consuming. I have already changed battery when I'm shooting this video and I have a lot of extra batteries and chargers. So one battery is not enough for most people. And for being a relatively new camera, I think it's a bit strange that it doesn't have USB-C for charging. It has a micro USB. But overall this is a great camera with great image quality, great video quality and with the external microphones great 
audio quality and if you want the Sony APS-C camera that is the best value for money the Sony A6400 is definitely it. If you want to know more about my lenses and what I think about them I have reviewed many of them in my previous videos. If you have any questions regarding the Sony A6400 just leave me a comment down below and if you found this video helpful please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.